Okay, so uh, Jim and everybody here, we have um, here a fully set up of uh, the Google technology. We have uh, the Google View, fully portable technology. As you can see, it's uh, a handheld technology. We have uh, installed in a cradle for uh, having better data communication so that you can go or read from that. We have a setup here with uh, um, our oil samples and all the spares you need to perform Google test. Ruler, remaining useful life evaluation routine. So it's a technology who is uh, measuring the remaining useful life of your lubricants, any type of lubricant who contained at least one type of antioxidant. So what we did is uh, with this technology, the, the, uh, the, the technology behind the measuring of antioxidants is the cyclic photometry, or it's an electrochemical uh, technique. And we are going to take an oil sample, add a small amount of oil sample in this uh, electrolytical test solution. And by doing this, we are going to extract the antioxidants out of the base oil. We are going to apply it through this three electrode sensing system, which I will show you here. This is the heart of the ruler consisting of three electrodes, two platinum and one glassy carbon electrode. It's the heart of the rule because with this we are going to measure the antioxidants into our electrolytic test solution. By doing that we are going to activate the antioxidants over this cyclic photometric technique and the quantity of antioxidants, active antioxidants will be measured. Now the rule technology is a comparative technology. So it's uh, not a technology to measure absolute concentration of antioxidants, but we want to compare the concentration of antioxidants from the new oil versus the, red, the used oil, the in-service oil, if you want. There are different types of antioxidants, and for every type of antioxidants, in every individual type of antioxidants, we have the ability to measure the remaining useful life. Or if you want, the remaining useful life is the remaining activity of the antioxidants present in our lubricant. Why do we have these different colors? You could wonder why we have this nice uh, green, yellow, uh, red, and the missing one is the blue test solution. Because every lubricant has different types of antioxidants, the method is to keep it simple. So for industrial lubricants, we are going to use the green test solution. So if you come into turbine oils, gas turbines, steam turbine oils, greases, compressors, you will be using the green test solution. If you want to measure transformer oils, uh, if you want to measure just phenols in hydraulic oils, you're going to be using the yellow test solution. People in the aerospace, aircraft, jet engine oils, helicopters will be using the red test solution. And we're missing the blue one. The blue one is everything which is combustion applications. So we think about the gas engine oils, biogas engine oils, uh, diesel, automotive, everything which is combustion related lubricants. The first thing we are going to do is first of all is going to take this electrolytical test solution and we are going to sample 400 microliter of oil from this sample. So here uh, I'm going to take one uh, oil and uh, I take this pipette. This is a, a multi-volume pipette, 400 microliter, very small size. 400 microliter is less than half a milliliter. So it's a very small oil sample size. So I take my oil sample and I bring it into my test solution vial. What is a test solution vial going to do? It's very simple. We have here three components in the test solution vial. We have the sand at the bottom of the vial. The sand is going to help us to break the big oil droplet in small oil droplets. Because what we want to do, is, remember, we want to extract the antioxidants out of the base oil. So with the sand, we are going to break and make small droplets, a very high area, 
So quick extraction of antioxidants. The second component in this test vial is a, a conductive medium. It's a solvent, in this case acetone. It can also be ethanol, depending on the test solution. And the third component are electrolytes. Because what we want to do is create a chemical, electrochemical reaction. So what I do now is I'm going to use the sand, shake it, and really bring all of the antioxidants from the base oil into the test solution. And as you can see, you have now uh, uh, like a, a yellow test solution. And uh, if you compare it to the new, this is the mixed test solution. The scent is then slowly settling down to the bottom of the vial. And then the antioxidants, they take the time and stay in solution. Shaking, 20 seconds. Waiting time, 2 minutes. In the 2 minutes time, you give the, here, the holder, and you leave it there for 2 minutes. Step number 2 is making sure and preparing that you are going to use an electrode. I remember, three uh, electrode sensing system. This probe consists of these three electrodes. I need to make them clean. Because on this surface, we are going to use a micrometer layer. We are going to apply with this electrochemical reaction. So it's going to be fundamental to make a, in between each test this electrode clean. It's the most important part of the rubric test. At any time, you have to make sure that this electrode is clean. So I take the electrode between my fingers, the probe, then I clean it with the alcohol. This is IPA 70-30%, so it's just a way to remove the oil and some of the oxidation products. And then I take a lymph-free paper tissue, and I'm going to dry off the alcohol. Because this probe has to be the electrode surface has to be 100% clear. So I check it visually. I can see and this probe is now 100% clean. So I'm ready to perform the test. Second step is ready, so my electrode is ready. Then I'm taking my vial, which is now, as you can see, the scent is at the bottom of the vial, the test solution is nearly clear, there's no chance that any oil droplet will stay into the oil, which would interfere with the test. I check there's no oil droplet on the surface, and then I simply insert the electrode into my vial, turn it slightly, put in the holder, and I'm ready to perform my test. I go back to step number three, it's performing the rule test. I select on the screen the test solution, which will be the green test solution. I will give it a name, because this oil is the brand of the name of the oil, is, um, which I will now type in. So I use this small keyboard, which is connected to the rule of view. Add the name of the standard oil. I select the volume 400 microliters because it's a quantitative test of oil. It's important that you always select the same sample volume. You can use 100 microliters, 200, 400. That means that if you use 400 for your standard, you use also 400 for your used oil. If you only use 200 for your used oil, you will only have half of the response the four form the microliter. It's a quantitative test. So it's directly in relation to the amount of oil you add. The oil sampling volume depends on the application. Industrial lubricants is 400 microliter. Jet engine oils, aircraft engine oils will be usually 50 to 100 microliter because they basically use much more antioxidants in their lubricants because it's a different application and more oxidative stress. Uh, engine oil is also 4 microliter. So I add that to the system, green test solution, 4 microliter. And then I am just ready. He asked me to perform the test. I start the test. I run it. 
and now you can hear the unit has started. It's activating the antioxidants, exchanging the electrons with the uh, active antioxidants, creating uh, this oxidation reaction. And I should now see with the Google graph, <coughs> I should see um, two graphs. And what I can see on the graph here, I uh, then um, I can see uh, from the graph, if you can see it from distance, you can recognize uh, here two distinct antioxidants peaks. Mm -hmm. This is the voltammetric response of the antioxidants. I'm going to save this as my oil. So the next step is I have saved as my standard. I want to use it and compare it to a used oil. So the standard, you say it once, mm -hmm. you don't have to repeat it all the time. So you put it in your database, you build up your database of your standards, and you can exchange it. With this unit, you can electronically exchange from any part of the world, you can exchange your standards. So if a lab in Singapore wants to compare its standards with a lab here in Kansas City, it's very easy, you just exchange it electronically. That's the advantage of this unit. Um, Secondly, with this you can also very easily uh, make small databases and exchange information. So now, the second step we will do is uh, take a used oil. Um, dispensing these test solutions, it's uh, harmless. These are just, like I say, acetone with uh, water electrolytes. You can dispense them with your used oils. It doesn't need any special, um, let's say, disposal um, regulations or procedure in the lab or uh, on the on-site uh, plant. So, let's assume this is uh, now used oil and um, I'm taking now a used oil sample. I'm going to exchange the tip of my pipette. So we have here hopefully the right pipette tip, yes. Why do we exchange the pipette tip? Is to just avoid that we cross-contaminate uh, from one type oil to another type of oil. Of course it's turbine oil, it will not uh, really be so so important. So we take here our used oil sample. close our bottles. Again, oil sand, good shaking, 20 seconds. The shaking process is fundamental. Uh, if you don't shake correctly, you take the risk of not extracting your antioxidants correctly. And uh, the higher the viscosity, the longer you shake usually. Uh, ISO VG220, like a gear oil, you will have to use it uh, uh, maybe uh, a bit longer, the shaking. Also, you can use a, a vibrating platform to have a, uh, it's a vortex mixer, which is called to uh, have a better uh, um, extraction process. I should have now a graph appearing which shows me a used oil sample and uh, we can see the graph here, for those who can see it, we can see on the top, you see the new oil, and you see on the lower graph, the in-service oil. So the antioxidants have dropped for these two antioxidants. I check that visually, and I see that the graphs are correct, they are corresponding eh, over the time. I save it, and automatically he will calculate the results, and if I then check on the graph, he tells me that um, I have 46% uh, for additive number one, remaining antioxidants. And it's always the remaining that we express, so that means the 46 that is 54% consumed, and at 69% of the additive number two. Uh, that means that uh, this oil is in excellent shape. Uh, remaining use for life is uh, above 50% uh, for uh, this type of oil. Next two, three months, I take a new sample, trend it. And I can, with the software, then establish multiple graphs and trend the antioxidants. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.